Welcome back to Reading Redness Centers. Today, we are embarking on an exciting journey through the realm of geometry, as we unravel the mysteries behind one of its most famous principles, Pythagoras' Theorem. But before we dive into the depths of Pythagoras' Theorem, let's take a moment to refresh our memories on what exactly a right triangle is. A right triangle is a type of triangle that has one angle equal to 90 degrees. The side opposite of the right angle is called hypotenuse. The other two sides, which form the right angle, are called the legs of the triangle. Imagine a slice of pizza. That yummy triangle with a perfectly straight corner is called a right triangle. It has two special sides, the base and the height, just like a pizza has a crust and a cheesy point. The longest side, opposite the straight corner, is called the hypotenuse kind of like the pizza superhero name. Now, imagine we take the sides of our right triangle and use them to build squares. A square for the base, a square for the height, and a big square for the hypotenuse. The Pythagoras theorem tells us something incredible, the area of the big hypotenuse square is exactly equal to the areas of the smaller base and height squares added together. Let's see it in action. Suppose our base is 3 squares wide and our height is 4 squares tall. We can count the area of each small square. 3 times 3 is equal to 9 for the base and 4 times 4 is equal to 16 for the height. Now, for the big hypotenuse square, we add them up. 9 plus 16 is equal to 25. Amazingly, the big square has exactly 25 squares inside, just like the sum of the smaller squares. Now, onto the marvel that is Pythagoras' theorem itself. The Pythagorean theorem states that, in a right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the legs. In simpler terms, it's like a mathematical magic wand that helps us unlock the secrets of right-angled triangles. So, who was the brilliant mind behind this theorem? Meet Pythagoras, who was an ancient Greek philosopher and mathematician, born around 570 BCE on the island of Samos in the eastern Aegean Sea. Pythagoras founded a religious and philosophical school in Croton, now Crotone, in southern Italy, known as the Pythagorean School. Pythagoras and his followers made significant contributions to mathematics, including discoveries in geometry, arithmetic, and number theory. That said, it was likely independently discovered in several different cultures. There is evidence of its use in Egypt, Babylon, and China as far back as the 20th century BCE. But how do we wield Pythagoras' theorem in real-world scenarios? Here's a user-friendly guide to navigate this mathematical voyage. Identify the two legs of the triangle and the hypotenuse. Note their lengths. Determine which side you are trying to find. Substitute your lengths into the Pythagorean theorem equation and solve for the missing value. For instance, let's suppose we encounter a triangle with legs measuring 8 units and 15 units. By employing Pythagoras' theorem, we unveil the hypotenuse to be 17 units long. Truly enchanting, isn't it? But hold on, dear viewers. There's another fascinating aspect to Pythagoras' theorem known as its converse. This facet proclaims if the square of the length of the longest side of a triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, then the triangle is a right triangle. First, we determine which side would be the hypotenuse. Then, we use the values into the Pythagorean theorem. Let's put this principle to the test with yet another example. Suppose we are presented with side lengths of 15 units and 36 units. Applying the Pythagorean theorem, we uncover that the longest side measures 39 units, confirming our triangle's rightful place in the realm of right triangles. And there you have it, dear learners. A mesmerizing expedition through the wonders of Pythagoras' theorem. If you found this journey as exhilarating as we did, don't forget to like, share, 
and subscribe for more captivating educational adventures from Reading Redna Centers. Until our paths converge once more, keep exploring the vast landscapes of numbers and shapes.